man. I want you to declare aloud. Say, this is the word of God. What it says is true. If I follow the word of God, I cannot lose. I cannot be defeated. I am victorious. We are victorious. We can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. You may bring that word down and open it on up. Amen. I want you to open it. We're going to go in three places. We're going to go to Haggai, where we've been at. Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. And then if you want to write these all down, I'm going to say them. Amen. If you want to write them down, that's good to do. Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. Then we're going to revisit a place that we were last week, Luke chapter 1. Verses 39 through 45. So that's Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. And then lastly, I want you to open up to John chapter 1, verse 14. So I'm going to say them all again. That's Haggai, chapter 2, verse 9. And then Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. And then St. John, the, uh, the gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 14. Amen. But we're starting in Haggai. Amen. I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version. Haggai chapter 2, verse 9, it reads, The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, he's saying that the end will be better than the beginning. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. And that's Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. Now we're going to move on to Luke. And in Luke, we're going to read verses 39 through 45. We are in Advent season. And so it's only befitting, and it's appropriate through the word as well, that all of the word actually points to this person who's being announced, or who was announced prior to this, this particular passage that we're reading, and that's Jesus. Amen? Yes. Luke chapter 1, verses 39, and we're going to read through verse 45. And it reads... Now Mary arose in those days and went into a hill, into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah. She just received the word that she was receiving. She was going to have Jesus, that she would be impregnated with Jesus. Amen. And the once she received that word, she ran with it. Amen. Amen. To a city of Judah. And entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. That's her cousin. Amen. And in it, or excuse me, and it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb. I want y'all to say, and it happened. And it happened. Yeah. It happened. happened. Mm hmm Yeah. It happened. Whether she knew it or not, it happened. Yeah. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then she spoke out loud, spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord, you see the capital L there, and of course she's talking about Jesus. Uh, the mother of my Lord should come to me. For indeed, 
Hallelujah. Uh, hmm. She didn't see her as just old Mary anymore, y'all. I, 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 can't, I can't ignore that. She didn't see her as just Mary anymore. The problem is that we still looking at one another as though you're the same old that you were uh, 20 years ago. Are you the same old that you were uh, 30 years ago? Are you the same old that you was even last week? Somebody say, I'm new, baby. Ah, hmm. yeah, something changed about you. Yeah, it, it, it happened. We'll find out what in just a moment. Yeah. And then she, she went on and said here, For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. He said, she said, blessed is she who believed. Oh, that's so good. Blessed is she who believed. Not that she just knows about it. Not that she just heard about it, but blessed is, is she who believed, for there will be, hallelujah, a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Amen. Now, let's go to our final text. And this one is very short, so we, we'll be able to get right on into it. St. John chapter 1, verse 14. St. John, the Gospel of John. Or according to John, chapter 1, verse 14. And the word became flesh, that word being Jesus, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We give God praise for his word. We are in part three of our series titled Promise Vision. When part three of our series titled Promise Vision, the truth is there's a promise that is over your life. And that promise is of the greater glory of God. But it's so important that with that promise that you have vision that will focus on that promise. There's a statement that we've been lifting up, and I want you to repeat it and tell it to somebody. Look around and find somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor. Keep, your keep your eyes on the promise, on the promise. because God, God will not disappoint. Keep your eyes on the promise of greater glory because God will not, he will not disappoint. Today I want to teach a lesson titled Pregnant with the Promise. I want to teach a message entitled Pregnant with a Promise. I want to take a moment and do just a, a, a quick backtrack to bring us up to speed because there are some essential things that I want you to write down or understand before we get into the meat of this. We've been talking about the greater glory. We've read Haggai chapter 2 for at least the last month just about. And what we have continued to hear repeated is that Number one, God is going to fill the temple with glory. Amen. Yeah, yeah. The old, he said that old rundown temple, the one that was burnt down uh, during uh, the Babylonian exile, and, and, and you're looking at it, and it, and it looks a hot mess. And, and since you've come back, it's been sitting there for 16 years. Come on, people of Israel. Uh, it's been sitting there for 16 years since God said to do something about it. But here we are nonetheless here. And we're working on it. And what they see is that it don't look like what it was before. He said, don't worry about that. Be strong. He said, he said I'm going to be with you. My spirit was promised that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm still with you in this. But finish the thing that I told you to start. Amen. And he goes on and tells them, he says that this, this latter temple is going to be greater than 
the former. And he even goes on and says that I'm going to fill that temple with my glory. We find later in the New Testament that Paul calls us the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but, but what is the glory? We've been talking about glory. It's not good to assume that people know what you're talking about when you say glory. We could assume that glory is just that it's just going to be it's going to be real good. I'm going to get exactly what I wanted. It's going to be the very thing that that I that I said that it was going to be this and that. Well, I want to help us get an understanding of what glory is. The word in the Hebrew for glory is kabod. The word in the in the Hebrew for glory is kabod. OK, everybody say kabod. Yeah, kabod. That means glory in the Hebrew. And that word essentially describes the weighted presence of God. It describes the weighted presence of God. You hear people say the weight of his glory. They're not just saying that or singing it just to sing it or saying it just to say it. It's the definition of glory. It has weight. And, that, and God is always everywhere because he's omnipresent. But he then will choose to manifest his presence in an obvious way because he's everywhere, but many times we don't recognize it. But he'll do it in an obvious way, and we call this glory. I'll give you an example. When they built the first temple, and they, 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 they of course, were praying over it, here's what happens, brothers and sisters. The glory of God fell into the temple that Solomon built. And it was so thick. It was so present that even the priests could not get inside of it. The, 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 the presence of God was that manifested in such a way that they could not go in. So while God can be present everywhere, he can choose to manifest his presence in a place to where it's obvious. Somebody say it's obvious. Yeah. And in fact, that's another way or a simple way that you can look at it. You can say that God, when we're, we're talking about God's glory, we can just simply say it's obvious that God was here. When you look at your life and you know that that wasn't nobody but God that did that, that's God's glory. It's obvious that was God. Without a shadow of a doubt, that was God. Oh, come on here, somebody. You've got a testimony in you right now that you can just recall on to say that I know without a shadow. I don't care what nobody say me. I know that I know that I know that if it had not been for God, I wouldn't be here in this moment or this would not have been possible. It's his glory. I, I, I just remembered that, you know, Lady Brooks, come here for just a second. Later. Come on, come on, come on. Now, just for a second, it's going to tie with the, with the message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, as a matter of fact, let's do this as well. Moms, come on up here for just a second. Come on, come on, come on, real quick. Mother, come on, come on. There's a, there's a, there's a point behind this. Come on up here and stand by, stand by Chanel. And mother, you come and stand by me. Come on, come on. We've talked about this before, so this is not a surprise. So if you hear something that may be a bit disturbing, um, don't be alarmed. It's going to tie with our message today. Amen? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to your name. So, y'all, this is my mama. Amen. This is my mama. And this is my wife. And that's her mama. We are the children of those two. Now, we've got dads as well. Amen. And even got other mamas. But these are the ones who womb we came out of. Now, what you may not know, and some of you do know, because we've talked about this before, and they've testified about it as well. There was a time ago, he said, for, for you to share just a little bit. So you share for just a moment about this so I don't have to say it. They may say I'm making this up, so I want you to, want you to share it with me. Oh, hallelujah. God is so good. Um, I was pregnant with Enrique, had just found out, and I told the doctor that I didn't want him that I wanted to have an abortion. The abortion was scheduled. And the Holy Spirit came to me and spoke to me. I woke up 
the next morning, hallelujah, on the day that it was scheduled, and I told my mama that God said no, that I needed to have this child. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we can give God praise for that. Come on here. Giving honor to God, I was a married woman at the time when I conceived Chanel, but before I conceived Chanel, I had Antoine. Antoine might have been eight months old. And truth be told, he wasn't supposed to be here either. God, glory to God. But God let me hear his heartbeat. And I, he said no. But on this line and on this journey, when God gave me Chanel, Antoine was about eight months old. And my husband and I at that time, we talked about it. And I just said I couldn't do it. I, I didn't know what else to do. So my insurance said all I needed was $100. Take $100 to take away my baby out. That's how free it was for me to get rid of my child. But when I went into the doctor's office, the doctor told me right then and there, because I was kind of hysterical when I went to him and talked to him, he said, we're going to go in, we're going to look and see how far along you are. He said, ma'am, he said, you really just got pregnant. And so when he told me I had just got pregnant, I said, oh, well, okay. He said, I'm going to give you four weeks, four weeks to come to a decision. He said, bring your $100 back. And I kept saying, I got my $100, sir. I got my $100. But the doctor said, uh, if I do it now, I don't think that's what you really want to do. So God was interceding on her behalf through a doctor. <laughs> At the time, I went home. I told my husband. My husband said, oh, okay. First week, I heard the slightest cry in the name of Jesus. The slightest cry was just a little, it was a, just a small little cry. Hallelujah, Jesus. The second week, the baby got louder, and it got louder to the point that it was so loud I could hear her crying in my morning time. I was hearing her at nighttime, but now I was hearing her in the daytime. And God was interceding on her behalf right then that she is supposed to be here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So by the time the fourth week had came about, and I knew I had my appointment in a couple of days, I looked at the mirror and the baby was just screaming in my head. Hallelujah. I thought I had lost my mind. And in losing my mind, I said, Lord, <laughs> show me what to do. Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. I went back to the doctor. No, I told my husband, I said, you know what? I can't do it. I said, I just can't do it. And he just looked at me with a blank look. Well, I kind of figured you weren't going to do it anyway. But, you know, at the end of the day, it rocked on to when I went back to the doctor, the doctor said, I already knew you weren't going to do it. He said, well, let's prepare ourselves for our baby. He called her his baby. Because at the end of the day, had he not put the brakes on, God had not given him the vision to put the brakes on for me. He interceded on this doctor's behalf. And don't tell me God can't intercede on anybody. Anybody. Because when it's meant to be, it's just meant to be. Hallelujah. Come on, we ought to give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Listen, the reason why I asked them to come up here, I asked them to come up here. Because what they didn't realize is that they were carrying the greater glory of God. Uh, Y'all got to hear what I'm saying this morning. This was a moment where God's glory showed up. Because it's obviously God. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. Let me run this down for you because maybe you don't understand how significant this is. The year that Chanel was born and I was born was 1989, which is the same year that this ministry was birthed as well. You got to hear what I'm saying. It's the same year that this ministry was birthed. 
And why do you think that God would step in so aggressively on both of our mothers who don't know each other, who have no idea, they don't know what's going to happen, uh, whether it be a 20 years later when we get married, and then, of course, even a little further down the road, when one day here we are installed as pastor and first lady of the same ministry. What they didn't know is that that same year, God was working even in what we call greater collaboration because it took her daddy and mama, yeah, it took, it took her dad and mother to be pregnant with a promise of a ministry that, that really he fought with. Y'all heard Bishop a few weeks ago? He fought with it. And she said, you know what's happening. You're going to keep on catching it until you do what God told you to do. You see, I'm going to talk about this in just a moment. What Bishop didn't know was he was experiencing labor pains. I don't know if y'all hearing what I'm saying today. All of the trouble that they were experiencing up until the moment that they finally birthed the ministry, he was experiencing labor pains. They were going through things emotionally, probably financially, all types of issues. Don't know where in the world all these issues or this attack is coming from. It wasn't an attack. It was labor pains. They were getting ready to birth something that was greater than they would have ever imagined. Y'all, y'all can go have your, have your seat. You can have your seat. Look at somebody and say, pregnant with a promise. Yeah. Yeah. Pregnant, pregnant with a promise. Pregnant, pregnant, pregnant with a, with a promise. We've got these two young ladies who are converging in this moment. Hallelujah. Mary, she's carrying who is the greater glory. The king of glory has come in her. The manifested presence of God, who is the Holy Spirit, has come on her. And now she's pregnant with the son of God. And so here she is carrying the greater glory. You see, when he was talking in Haggai chapter 2, verse 9, this was... A, a, a promise, a, a, es- a eschatological promise that was being shared about Jesus. It was to let us know that he was coming in the end. That's what eschatology is. The end times. It, he's letting us know that this is what's to come. That even though it may be difficult in this moment, that he is going to get the glory in the end or in the latter. It's going to be greater than what it ever was in the former. So here the glory has come. The, 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 the one they call Emmanuel, God with us, uh, the presence of God walking amongst them. They beheld him of the glory of God, the one that was begotten of God himself. He is the true glory. You can't get no better glory than that. He's walking around. But before he walks around, he was inside of her womb. She goes and runs over you, and I, 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 I hope you didn't hear or overlook that word. When you hear a word, when you receive a word from God, when God has spoken a word over your life, when Mary heard the word from the angel Gabriel, she didn't just sit on it. She went in haste to go and see her cousin. She went quickly, hallelujah, to go and see Elizabeth. You see, because she heard what the angel said. He said that your cousin, she's in the sixth month of her pregnancy. That's just a little ways up in Luke. He said that she's in the sixth month of her pregnancy. And here it is that she's going to have a son as well, and she was barren. She, she said, you know what? Mary said, you know what? I'm going to go and see it for myself. She went and with haste and she went to follow up on what God said. How many of you that God has given you a message or a word in your life and you're still sitting on it? You still praying and asking God to confirm something that he has put inside of you when you didn't take a move or step out when he gave you a word. 
When God gives you a word, you ought to respond to the word by faith. Faith without works is dead. When she received the word by faith, she walked with haste in order to get to the city in Judah to see her cuz, Elizabeth. And what happens when she walks into the room? The word says that it happened. It says it happened. What is it? We could easily say that the baby leap. But what all happened in that moment? The scripture doesn't specifically say the exact moment when, when Mary conceived of the baby. But all we know is that it happened. And when she walked in the house, when she called out to Elizabeth, when Elizabeth heard the sound of her voice, something on the inside of her began to move around. Something on the inside of her began to shift around. You see, my brothers and sisters, I don't know if Mary knew it for sure at that moment, but if she didn't know, she knew by this point. Let's, let's look at the word one more time here. I want to go back to Luke and tell you, and, and let's look back at what Elizabeth said here. Let's go back to what she said. So here it is. Let's see it. There we go. There we go. Elizabeth says this here in verse 42. She spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. In other words, hallelujah, she ain't even, she ain't even had a baby yet. Elizabeth, she ain't even got this word yet. But yet, here it is. If you look up a little further, the Spirit of God filled her. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And by the words of the Spirit, this was God confirming what he had already done inside of Mary. You know how sometimes you go and call people because you just need somebody to confirm something for you? It, let, me, let me tell you about something. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? You see anything different about me? You know you've been losing weight. I done lost a little weight, y'all. Thank God. But sometimes when you've lost weight, you don't realize that you've lost weight. And you need somebody else to tell tell you, hey, you look like you losing weight. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, I lost a few pounds. 28 to be exactly. Oh, that's me, y'all. I lost 28 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. She walks in. She ain't told Elizabeth nothing. But Elizabeth somehow knows by the Spirit of God that something has changed about you. Uh, let's keep going here. We're going to get to this. This is so good. Y'all stay with me for, for a little while. We've got, we've got a word here. But, but why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the, the voice, the sound of, the, of your voice greeted, or excuse me, the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears. The babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed. Thank you, Father. I, I could really work this, and I think that that's really when it happened. Blessed is she who believed. Blessed is she who believed. Blessed is she who believed. I believe that the moment that she became pregnant is when she believed. Did, did you hear what I said? The moment that she became pregnant with the promise was the moment that she believed what the angel had said to her concerning about what God had said about her. The moment that you believe, brothers and sisters, I believe that that's when you will be impregnated with the promise that God, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's the moment that it will actually conceive inside of you. I could preach to you every single Sunday. I could preach to you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and come back on another Sunday. But until you believe the word that I am declaring to you, nothing will be birthed from your body. to tell me 365 days and went by prayer 365 and ain't nothing in you Jesus. 
three. 300, y'all got heart, got mad when about the 16 years, but I'm going to just use 365 days. 365 days. Matter of fact, times two, because we're coming up on a two-year anniversary. Two years of hearing his word and ain't nothing inside of you. Or maybe there's something is, but you just don't know it yet. The other day we were in the house and... Alicia was watching YouTube on TV, and I heard the lady talking, and I, I said, okay. She said, um, I was in the bed one night, and I started feeling these pains in my stomach. She said, I didn't understand what was going on, so I went to the bathroom and, you know, and uh, went back to the bed, and, and the pains got worse. And all of a sudden, you know, they would come periodically, some of y'all already catching on, ain't you? They would come periodically. Yeah, the ladies know Brother Nathan like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I'm just messing. I'm just messing. Because us guys, we don't think about these things. Only the ladies really know about this. Uh, but, but watch this. It was, it was a guy that actually gave her understanding. It was her husband. They started coming together more frequently. Her husband said, that sounds like labor pains. She said, uh, excuse you. You got to be pregnant to have labor pains. She went on back and laid down, but then the pain became unbearable. Some of you, you've been going through stuff, been catching it from left and right, from up and down, from side to side, from cat to corner, whatever it may be, you've been catching it. And you thinking that, oh, it's just, it's just ain't my year. Oh, it's just a pandemic, y'all. It was, it was just 2020. No. I think there might be something in you, but let's keep going with the story. She went to the hospital, and the pain got worse. They put her in a wheelchair, and they began to roll her, but then the pain got so bad, she said, I got to stand up. And she stood up, and all of a sudden, whew, there was a puddle of water on the floor. She, she's saying, well, what's going on? Still, she just ain't with it yet, y'all. She's like, I am not pregnant. They get her in the room. She gets in the bed, and they lift her legs up and find out, and the nurse said, well, they said, push. And she began to push. And next thing you know, the nurse said, well, you have a beautiful baby girl. She said, whoa, 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 whoa. what? She said, you had a baby. As you probably already figured out, the name of the show is I didn't know I was pregnant. I got a question for you. Do you know that you pregnant? I'm going to say this over here to this side. Do you know that you are pregnant? So Sierra said, Pastor, I'm not having no more babies. It's too late. They by grown now. But I came to ask you a question this morning, Mother McKinney. You're not Sarah or Elizabeth. But baby, do you know that you are pregnant? I mean, just take a moment and, and start adding up the symptoms. Sometimes you got this uneasiness in your belly. They call it, they call it morning sickness. But the word of God called it in Revelation chapter 10. He called it a, a bitter sweet taste in the belly. He told John, he said, John, he said, eat this book that I'm giving you. And he said, this book will taste sweet to your tongue. He was talking about the word of God. I feel like I'm preaching up in here. He said it would be sweet to your tongue, but he said it would be bitter to thy belly. You see, the word sounds good when it's coming from the preacher's mouth, 
will jump up and down, run and shout, and do all of this and that. But baby, when that word becomes bitter on the inside of you, You thought that it was just something you ate. Oh, it was. But you ain't got food poisoning. Baby, you have consumed the word of God. You have consumed the word of God. And what you didn't realize is that word that you consumed, not only did you consume it, but you believed and then you conceived. <laughs> Oh, come on here. Work with me for just a second. The moment that you believe that word, the moment that you believe what God said about you, Sister Lee, the moment that you believe, my brother, what God said about you, that was the moment that that thing was conceived inside of you. The moment that God told me that I was going to come and pastor this ministry, it was about five years before it even happened. But I said, you know what, I believe it, but I'm not going to move until you say so. But the moment I believed that it, it was already conceived. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. And when I woke up on that November morning and I found out that Bishop Lee was announcing his retirement, all of a sudden the baby leaped. All of a sudden, Sister Grace, the baby leaped on the inside of me and I felt this discomfort. I said, no, no, there's no way that it could be right now, God. You mean to tell me as soon as I began to change my mind, as soon as I began to change my life, that you're telling me it's time to go and pastor? The baby leaped again. And I said, oh, you gotta be kidding me. But then the next thing you know, I went to the hospital. I went to my physician, the one that's local down here and that was my pastor. And I said listen here this is what I believe God is saying to me and guess what he did he confirmed it he said didn't I tell you all that you weren't going to be with me always didn't I tell you that you were only being empowered for your purpose that was the name of the ministry and the next thing you know I couldn't even push it out he pushed me out that Sunday I woke up and we got to church and he went before the whole congregation and said, well, listen here, y'all, Brother Rika and Sister Chanel are going to be leaving to go and pass that at their granddaddy church. I said, wait a second, I ain't even said nothing to them yet. You spilling all the news. They don't even know. God was pushing me. <laughs> that was a push. Oh, come on here. And then here's what happens. We say, well, now we've got to go over there and talk to them because Jordan and Brianna was with us and they can't hold water, so they was going to tell everybody about it. Yeah, yeah. So then here's what happens. Now we get over here and we walk into the room. We walk into, I would even call it the birthing room. When we walked into that office, we stood outside in the waiting room listening to all of the sound of labor pains that were in the room because there was so much confusion and things that they didn't understand and attitudes and frustration and concern and worry because they were too going through labor pains. They didn't understand that there was going to be something birth. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And so finally, Brittany called for us to come on in because Brittany was texting us from the outside. Well, she was inside texting us. I'm telling her business. We three years in, nah. <laughs> but so, here we are. We walk in, and we see the room full. Y'all yeah, see how that office look? It was most stuff in there, and we all stuffed in there like sardines. And I said, Brittany says, well, Enrique got something he want to say. I said, well, about five years ago, God told me that I would be your successor. And at that moment, the tears ran down Bishop's face. Hallelujah, glory to your name. You see, the word talks about how, how the, 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 the pains that a mother goes through before the baby is birthed. But when the baby is birthed, all of a sudden the pain is exchanged for joy. Those tears were not tears of sorrow, but those tears were tears of joy. Because the very thing that he had been laboring for for 32 years was finally coming and was here. 
the room broke out in worship. There wasn't a dry eye, a dry eye in the room except for me because I'm like, well, did I say something? Long story short, we move into the ministry. Ah, I can't tell y'all the whole story, but I could tell y'all that it felt like I went through a C-section. I went through a C-section. And it wasn't a professional C-section. I went through one that was done with negligence. You see, Mary had it right that when she heard the word, she moved with haste. The moment that I heard the word, I dragged my feet. I said, Lord, I don't, I don't want to just leave them like this. Even though I had already given them so much and I'd left so much there, but I, I just didn't want to go. In just 30 days, a little bit more, of dragging my feet caused me the deepest wounds in my heart. I want to tell somebody today that the word that God gave you, do not drag your feet to the delivery room. Hallelujah. Do not drag your feet to the delivery process. But when God gives you a word, move with haste. It took me about a year. Because I thought I was healing. But then something else came and disturbed the laceration or the, the, the dressing of the wound. It was somebody close that hurt me. Somebody close that wounded me. And I'm sitting there trying to find out, God, why? Perhaps I was still actually recovering. But by the grace of God, I made it. I asked the question, do you know that you're pregnant? I really want to carry this word out to the completion, but I could sense right now that hallelujah. <laughs> that God wants somebody who's ready. There's somebody who just felt the leap inside of them, and he wants you to run with haste to this altar. Come on, if that's you and you felt something leap within you through the words that were being shared, don't move with hesitation. Don't drag your feet. This is not a drill. Run to this altar right now. If there's something in you that you realize that you've been carrying a promise that really you've been carrying labor pains within, you've been fighting and toiling within, God is ready to birth it from you. Don't drag your feet, but run to the altar. Let me give you some context. Stay right there where you at, mother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, glory to your name. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 God, I bless you, Lord. Father, I thank you. She's a midwife. Ha, hallelujah. She has experience. Hallelujah. She can help somebody birth something because she has birthed some things herself. Hallelujah. Deacon Clark, if you can get over here, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Deacon. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me explain. Let me explain. Because I don't think that you understand exactly what I'm talking about. I showed you something earlier. I showed you something. I didn't plan to do this. God is doing exactly what he wants to do. I brought my mom up here. I brought my wife up here. And I brought her mom up here. Bring your attention here. Here's what happens. We shared a testimony 
about how the two of them nearly aborted us. Do, do you hear what I'm saying? The two of them nearly aborted us. I say, I say nearly because it didn't happen. Some of us are still stuck because of something that nearly happened to us. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Let's say this one more time. Maybe this way. Some of us are still stuck in 10 years in the past because something that almost happened to you. Something that almost happened to your family. You almost lost your house. You almost lost your, your life. You almost lost your mind. You, um, you got to hear what I'm saying. But yet you are still holding on to what was nearly. Nearly means that it didn't end like that. Nearly means that there was still an opportunity for glory to still make its way through. Y'all not hear what I'm saying. They nearly aborted us. We were at a conference in 2019. The T.D. Jakes conference. And on the final day, we were in there praying at the altar. At the altar. There's something special that can happen at the altar. Altar represents sacrifice. You would sacrifice your pride and make your way to the altar. Something significant can happen at the altar. We were at the altar. Hallelujah. And Chanel and I were hugging one another. And we were praying and praising God. And I heard the spirit of God tell me like it was plain as day. And he told me that I gave you and Chanel the ministry of canceling abortions. He said, I gave you the ministry of canceling abortions. He canceled our abortion so that we could help cancel somebody else's. Right now, somebody is dragging their feet and you are risking aborting your promise. You are risking aborting the baby inside of you. The promise that God has put inside of you, that you believe for, that you prayed for, that you cried for, is in you and is jumping and you are risking aborting it. So I'm going to say again, if there's somebody that the baby has leaped inside of you, come. Oh, yeah, that's right. Come. 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 What you carry is valuable. Hallelujah. What you carry is valuable. Hallelujah. What you carry is valuable. Come on. What you carry, what you carry is valuable. What you carry will shift generations. What you carry will change, will change generations. What you carry will shift communities. What you carry, come on. What you got inside of you is great. What you got inside of you, you think that you've been fighting for nothing? You think you've been going through it for nothing? You think that you've been struggling for nothing? There is something something inside of you God wants to bring it out of you but you have got to make it to the delivery room and he told Mary oh yeah 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 I got a word for you because somebody's trying to figure out how it's gonna happen <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing that you've been dreaming about, the thing that God put in your mind, that put in your heart. Yeah, you said, well, God, it's too big. It's too much. It's, it's too great. God, how are you going to do it through, through little old me? How are you going to do it through me? How are you going to do it through me? I, I, I just got a word for you, brothers and sisters. Look at what Elizabeth said under the spirit of God uh, telling her to say so. Here's what she says. Hallelujah. She said, blessed is she who believes. Yeah, yeah. But watch what she said after that. For there will be a fulfillment. For there will be a fulfillment. For there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. What does the word fulfill mean? 
you know how when you go and order something on Amazon, you caught the vision, right? You said, that's real nice. Some of us uncaught too many visions from Amazon. You caught the vision, and then you believed it because you clicked add the cart. And then once you hit check out, you conceived it. And now it's up to Amazon to deliver the thing that you ordered. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. When you received God's word and you believed it, that was the moment that you conceived it. But here's what I want you to know. It's not your job to get it to its destination. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not your job to make it manifest. It's not your job to change your family. It's hallelujah. It's not your job to change that office by yourself. It's not your job to change what's going on in your household. It's not your job to change what's going on in the one that you love. It's not your job. You don't have the resources. You don't have the storehouse. He said, if we try him in this, oh, come on here, you've been sowing. You've been sowing. He said, I will open up the windows of heaven, come on here, from that storehouse and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. In other words, what God is saying is, you've been trying to fulfill this yourself. He said, I will fulfill. I want you to declare aloud, close your eyes and say aloud, say, God will fulfill. Say it again, say, God will fulfill. Yeah, there's somebody else. There's somebody else. You've been holding on to it. You've been struggling with it. You've been toiling with it. God said, don't toil with it anymore. Don't worry about how you're going to get there, how it's going to happen, how you're going to get there, how it's going to happen, how you're going to get the resources, how you're going to get the money together, how you're going to get the people. He said, don't worry about it because I will fulfill. I will fulfill. I will fulfill. Keep your eyes on the promise. Keep your eyes, hallelujah, on the promise. Keep your eyes on the promise. You see, the problem is some of us have our eyes on the status of our Amazon order more than we do the promises of God. It's called anticipation. When you're anticipating a delivery for the thing that you believed him for, Amazon for, what you'll do is you'll go on Amazon on your app and you'll see, where is my delivery at? Okay, it says that they're on their way. Matter of fact, now they got it. I can see where they're at right now and how many stops they are away from my house. God is saying, how dare you? Look at an Amazon order. Delivery status. And not keep your eyes on the promise. 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 Keep your eye. I know you say, well, I, but I don't wait it too long. No, still come. Still come. Keep your eyes on the promise. Why? Because he won't disappoint. He, he won't disappoint. He won't disappoint. He will not disappoint. He won't disappoint. He will not disappoint. Paul said this, and I'm done. He said, and being confident of this, that he who began, he who conceived it, he who put it in you, he who began a good work is faithful to fulfill it, to complete it, to deliver it, to perfect it until the day, hallelujah, of Jesus Christ. If you would just keep your eyes on the promise, you won't disappoint. God will fulfill. I want you to lift your hands. Yeah. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. As you're lifting your hands, you're lifting your problems. Because with your hands, you've been focusing on the works. 
You've been trying to work it out all by yourself. Been trying to work it out in your own strength. Been trying to work it out in your own logic. In your own understanding. He said, lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, in all thy ways know him, in all thy ways become intimate with him, and he will direct your path. John chapter 6, Jesus said, the only work of the Father, the people were focused on works, he said the only work of the Father is to believe in him whom he sent. There's a promise inside of you. And it's not your job to fulfill it. But it's your job to take care of it. It's your job, hallelujah, to nurture it. Hear me in what I'm saying. When you are carrying a physical baby, you do not. It's amazing that it's all women up here. And just about all of you are mothers. If you're not a physical mother, you are a spiritual mother. Jesus. You birthed babies. Jesus. When you found out that you were pregnant, you said, I can't put everything to my mouth. I can't go to every place. I can't go to every, every place that people call me to. Because what I'm carrying is great. What you are carrying is precious. Do not mishandle your promise. Jesus. Nurture your promise. Hallelujah. Feed your promise. Jesus. Worship over your promise. Jesus. Allow God to fill you with his spirit. Jesus. So that he can anoint your promise. Jesus. And God will fulfill. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word. Everyone stand all over the building because we're done. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Father. Come on, put your hands back up. Are we almost done. You'll need endurance in this season. I know this is physically uncomfortable. It don't compare nothing to what you've been through already. You need endurance. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you have brought forth. Father, we are pregnant with a promise. Because, Father, we believe you. And, Father, the moment we believe, Father, we conceived. And it happened. We won't walk around, Father, acting like we don't know if we're pregnant. Father, even the men, we are pregnant with a promise. There's one that's already manifested in my life, Father. I'm, I'm here in this moment right now. But, Father, there is a greater hallelujah that you were desiring to birth through me. And I believe the same thing to be for every person that is here at this altar. And even those that are at the altar online. Hallelujah. Right there in their home. Father, you desire to bring forth the promise of greater glory through our lives. So, Father, I pray as they move forward that, Father, they would no longer be shaken. Hallelujah. They would no longer be shaken. They would no longer be distracted. But, Father, they would be focused. I sense him telling me to anoint you. I haven't anointed anybody in a long time. But I believe that today is a day that he's saying to anoint you because you're about to deliver something. Hallelujah. To anoint you because, hallelujah, you're about to birth something. Even, come on here, Elizabeth, you are about to, to birth something. You thought that your time was over. You thought that, that you were barren now. Hallelujah. You thought that it was over. You thought that you were insignificant. You thought that you had been rejected. But no, there is a promise. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to your name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. You will deliver. Hallelujah. You went through mighty birthing pains. 
Glory to your name. You went through mighty. Hallelujah. You went because he's going to birth something great through your generation. You think all of the frustration you went through over your children and grandchildren and even children that ain't even yours, that he won't get the glory out of it. Keep your eyes on the promise. Keep your eyes on the promise. Stop being distracted. He will fulfill. Hallelujah. He will fulfill. He will fulfill. He will. Hallelujah. Stop trying. Stop trying to control the timing of the delivery. Stop trying to control the timing of the delivery. That's not your burden to carry. It's not your burden to carry. You keep your eyes on the promise and God will fulfill. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> oh, glory. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. That wasn't the first time you thought about what I told you the other day, was it? Have you ever thought about anything of that nature? Has a thought ever come across your mind before? It was a leap when I said it, but you rejected it. It leaped within you when I said it, but you rejected it. Don't reject it. Don't reject it. You think that you're going through all of this schooling for nothing? You think you're just getting in debt? He said that the latter shall be greater. Don't worry about the resource. He said the silver is mine. The gold is mine. I don't have to go and make up stuff. This is what his word says. Don't think Pastor Brooks being funny. His word says the silver is mine. The gold is mine. I will fill this house with my glory. 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 I will fill. And when he does it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When he does it, it's going to be obvious that he did it. <laughs> it's going to be obvious that he did it. It's going to be obvious that he did it. Nobody else did this but him. Nobody else get the glory but him. The same way Zacharias was quiet until it was birth, I'm going to be quiet until it's birth. But you go home and write it down, and you move with haste towards the vision. You move with haste. You came all the way from Lakeland for nothing? No, you come over here because God needed to confirm what was inside of you all this while. You've been catching it because they want to distract you from the promise. Keep your eyes on the promise, and he will not disappoint. Get your doctorate. Get your doctorate. It's going to prepare you for where you're going. You're not just getting it to put it on your wall. You're getting it for the kingdom of God. Oh, my God. Sister Mary, you came up here, didn't you? Well, we've been talking about Mary. Just happens to be your name. Sister Mary, don't think that because of your income bracket, baby, that you are insignificant. I need you to hear me what I say. Don't think because of what you think you don't know that God won't get the glory in, out, and through your life. You are, you are significant. You are significant. And what you carry is great. God will fulfill. Just keep showing up for your regular checkups. Keep praying. Keep studying. Keep worshiping. And don't get distracted. You hear me? You're carrying greatness inside of you. 
you're going to see it inside of your grandchildren. Jesus. The both of you are going to be able to stand together in testimony about what God did. Jesus. The both of you will unite yes. together. And I would even say y'all need to pray together about this thing, yes. about all of your children. Jesus. You need to pray together about it. Go grab her hand. Go hold her hand. Why do you think the devil want to put a wedge in between the two of you? Because he knows that there is greater that is going to come through the two of you. But it won't be an individual effort. It has to be greater collaboration. And God will do it. He will fulfill. Don't you worry about her. You know who I'm talking about. Don't worry about her. She's been on my heart. God will, hallelujah, he will fulfill, hallelujah, he will get the glory. And it's going to be obvious that it was him. Y'all give God praise in this house today, hallelujah. You may return to your seats. Y'all may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh yeah. Come here, pastor. Come on, come on, you know who I'm talking to. Come on up here, brother. I got to honor you for who you are. That's the way I can receive the gift of who you are in my life. And you too. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You pregnant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get you. No, I'm going to get you first. I'm going to get her last. Everything we talked about, keep your eyes on the promise. And God will fulfill. You have no idea what's in the works for you. You have no idea how God has been moving on your behalf. You have no idea the favor that's on your life. You have no idea what one may have thought was a failure or end was really just a transition to prepare you and position you for the greater glory. God is doing greater in your life. And I'm so excited to be a part of it. I'm so excited to watch you. I'm so excited to walk with you and to be in covenant with you as your brother. Hallelujah. And so we are sealing that thing because you will deliver every dream that he's shown you, even the things that you don't fully understand. It's been so much that it even gets confusing at times. Just write it down and refine it. Write the vision, make it plain. Believe it, receive it, refine it. Believe it, receive it, refine it. Believe it, receive it, refine it. And God will fulfill. I believe it to be so. Some of y'all going to have to change your diet because what you are carrying, you cannot run risk of messing it up. I'm talking about your spiritual diet and your physical diet. You're going to have to change it because what you carry is important. You will deliver this baby. Hallelujah. Glory. This is just one of many. <laughs> and I believe it to be so. Keep your eyes on the promise. Don't let anybody distract you. Don't let anybody discourage you. There's a reason why Joseph is your favorite. Because Joseph saw the promise. And the devil did everything he could to get him to give up and be distracted by it. But don't be distracted. Fight for your focus. Fight for your focus. Fight for your focus. The change is, is difficult because you are moving and turning something that is big. You are moving and turning something that's greater than you could imagine. God desires to do greatness through you. So, yeah, it's going to be challenging. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. But I believe it to be so. And we're going to watch God 
fulfill. God will fulfill. God will fulfill. God will fulfill. God will. Hallelujah. You will fulfill. Hallelujah. God will. Hallelujah. God will. God will fulfill. And it's going to be obvious. Hallelujah. It's going to be obvious. It's going to be obvious. It's going to be obvious that it was nobody but God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Father. Glory. Get the glory. Get the glory. Get the glory. Hallelujah. Get the glory. Get the glory. Get the glory out of our lives, Father. Get the glory. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I don't like to bother people, um, but Felix, if you and, and my wonderful friend could come for just a second. from the moment that I met you um, there was a sense of discomfort that came in me not a funny discomfort not that you had anything wrong but there was a discomfort when you came around and as we talked your words began to cause something to leap within me and I believe that the same way that it happened for Elizabeth, that the reason is being because there's something inside of you. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it's going to be. But I just want you to know, and I don't say this to be funny or even to disrespect what we talked about, okay? There were seasons where you may have been mishandled. And that ain't, you know, that ain't nothing that I caught from anywhere, right? We talked about this. There may have been seasons that you were mishandled. But I want you to know that by the grace of God that you won't be mishandled in this place. I've been praying about how to handle you. I've been seeking the Lord about how to handle you because what you carry is different. <laughs> what you carry goes beyond what you're working in right now. And it has the power to do something so much greater. And I just want to tell the both of you because even with the pains that you have gone through, you've experienced a lot. But what God promised us is that on the other end of suffering is that glory shall be revealed. Hallelujah. 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 And nobody will be able to take the credit for what God is going to do. Hallelujah. I made up, a, made up in my mind a long time ago. I said, God, I won't take his glory. What he's going to do through you, it's going to be obvious that it was God. I don't know when it's going to happen. But just know that you're carrying something that's bigger than you. And as I just heard in the room, you're carrying something greater. And I encourage you to nurture it. You see him mishandling it, you already know 
You, you've helped people birth things before. You've helped people birth things before. In the natural and in the spiritual. So I just want to anoint you. Is that okay? Okay. Grab hands. Lift your hand, other hand, feel it. And I'm praying and agreeing with you over your lives that God will fulfill. Hallelujah. God will. Hallelujah. He will fulfill. What you went through is not for nothing. What you're going through is not for nothing. Even what you're challenged with right now is just simply a labor pain. It's something that's letting you know that there's something inside of you. There's something in you that will come out, but you must keep your eyes on the promise of greater glory. God is going to manifest himself in your lives in a way that you have never experienced before. God desires to get greater out of you. Yes, you're different from your family. Yes, you're different from everybody else. You grew up in the culture, but there is something that he desires to do in you that is unprecedented. Hallelujah! He desires to get unprecedented glory out of your life. Hallelujah! And you don't have a problem with telling him yes. You don't have any issue with telling him yes, but don't ignore it. Don't sit back on it. Don't be casual ever again because God desires to get the greater glory in, out, and through both of your lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all give God a hand clap of praise in this house. God bless you both. Well, <laughs> I think we're done. Look at somebody and tell them, say, you are. You're pregnant with a promise. And I believe that God will fulfill it. Brother Nathan, Sister Grace, is it okay if I pray for you guys real quick? Can you come here for just a second? Both of you can just stand right here for a minute. It's gotten a bit messy up here, so I just want to <laughs> want to do the right thing. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Grace, you remind me of a person, and Nathan, we'll talk in just a second, I think. <laughs> you remind me of women who, who can bear great pain, and nobody ever knows it, as well as you might experience great joy, and people still don't know it. <laughs> But I believe that that speaks a lot to your character and your ability to endure. And I believe that while we're here, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I get a sense that something jumps inside of you while you're here. I get a sense that something jumps within the both of you while you're here. Whatever it may be, whatever has been spoken to you guys, 
But I believe that God desires to do something through the both of you in a way that's going to blow your minds. And I just want to pray for the both of you guys to stand in agreement that God will fulfill the promise that the both of you are carrying. Can you both come forward? Nathan, you carry the name of um, a very important prophet. Every person needs a friend like Nathan. Nathan is the kind of person that will tell you what you need to hear without destroying your heart. And he's brutally honest, but he does it in such a way that it's like, man, I still love you. And the truth is, we all need a Nathan. We need somebody who's committed to God enough that they won't let let us go and destroy the promise that God has in our lives. And I believe that God desires to use you, maybe not in the same capacity as Nathan. But I do want to pray that your capacity will be expanded so that you will be able to receive whatever it may be that God is carrying in you. I'm going to say this and I'm going to finish. Um, There's an old story about an elephant and a dog. Both of them got pregnant at the same time. And when they got pregnant, six months later, the dog births six babies. And then six months later again, the dog births 12 babies. The elephant hadn't birthed anything. This continues on so long to where the dog has birthed 12 babies three times, or puppies. Not babies, puppies. <laughs> and the dog finally looks up at the elephant and their friends and, and says to the elephant, are you sure you're pregnant? Because here it is, I've had all these babies, these puppies, and you still haven't delivered anything. The one thing that the enemy wants to do is want to convince you that you're not who you are. And that you're not carrying what you're carrying. You are carrying something significant inside of you. And by God's grace, I pray to see it come out of you. Hallelujah. Don't be bothered by others who seem to deliver faster than what you deliver. You see, here's what the elephant said. The elephant said, well, he said, you see, what you're carrying is puppies. What I'm carrying is an elephant. Mm, Jesus. When I drop what I'm carrying, the whole earth is going to notice. Yes. This elephant carry over there. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. Man. And so even though I may not have carried it yet or released it yet, it takes two years for me to release or deliver what's inside of me in the same way for you. Don't be discouraged when it takes a while. Don't be discouraged when it doesn't move as quickly as you thought. Don't be discouraged when what you dreamed about hasn't come to pass. Don't be discouraged. If I could just ask you a question, I'm just curious. What is your greatest passion outside of grace, of course, (laughs) and Jesus? (laughs) <laughs> anything that just grace have you ever seen anything where he just lights up when he does a certain thing that's what she says about you I was just telling somebody that um, that you know God gave us wives because we needed help we call, called our wives a help meet to meet us where we needed the most help and sometimes we can't see. Um, Sister Lee said that God gave them, knew they needed wives, and they're going to need a whole lot of help. This is the truth. We need, it, we need help. And if she's able to identify the area where you light up the most and what's lighting up within you or even leaping within you when you're doing it is the kingdom of God being manifested through you. That's what the kingdom is all about. It's helping people and delivering the truth to them, which is the gospel. And telling the captive that they are actually free. You've just been sitting in a cell that's been unlocked the whole time. And so I want to pray for you. That your voice will become stronger. That you will become more bold. And that you will be sure that you are pregnant. (laughs) All right? Not in any funny way because we live in in a society. I don't know what I'm talking about. 
but you're pregnant with a son, and so are you. You can bow your head. I just want to anoint you. Is this okay? I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I just want to ask permission. Thank you. It'll wash off, I trust. Can I lay my hand on you? Father, we thank you right now, Father, for these two. Father, I believe that there is something significant that is in both of them, Father, that you are carrying. And Father, perhaps they don't even realize it at this moment. Father, I pray that as they seek your face, as they go into a high place, as Habakkuk did, that, Father, you would allow them to see what you are saying. Yes, God. Help them, hallelujah, to see what you are saying. Give them promise vision. Give them the ability to see what you are saying to them. And Father, when they see it, I pray that they would believe it and they would actually refine it, Father, that they would write it down and make it plain. And when it doesn't make sense, Father, they would talk it out amongst one another. They would share it with trusted loved ones because there are people that they are interconnected with that are essential to the promise. Hallelujah. That you have placed inside of them, God. They just don't even realize it yet. But I believe even as Elizabeth, when she heard the voice of Mary and the baby began to leap in her, that, Father, you will carry a word so great. Hallelujah. Inside of them that, God, when they speak, when Nathan speaks over your people's lives, when Nathan declares truth over people's lives, that, Father, something will leap. Father, even as he greets them in the morning with a good morning, Father, or a good afternoon or a good evening, that, Father, they would have a leaping from within them, Father. Because, Father, they will bear witness with the promise that is inside of them. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you both. Amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. At this time, I just want to extend an invitation to three people. I know we went a bit long today. This was not a usual service kind of felt that as I was studying for this word and he took me to however he wanted to do it. But I'll say this here, that brothers and sisters, there are three people that I want to speak to. One who is not saved, meaning you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The other person is one who you are unsure, just not sure if you're saved. And the devil plays on insecurity. And we're going to secure your faith today. Amen. And there's one more person I want to speak to, and that person is the one who is backslidden, is what we call it. And you're on the right path, and you made a wrong turn. And it's so easy, it's just simply turning around. It's like when mom tells you kids to go and get something, and you start going in the wrong direction, you say, no, the other way. And then you go over here. Or you say, it's in your right hand. I mean your other right. You know what I'm saying, right? You're going in a direction with great passion, as Apostle Paul was before he had an encounter with God. But God is saying, with the same passion, I just need you to change direction. And that's called repentance. And so for those three people, I want to pray with you. And at Thrive, we believe a church that prays together is a church that will thrive together. So everybody repeat after me and say, Lord, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe he died for me. And I believe it was resurrected by your power. Father, forgive me of all of my sin and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Today, I'm saved by my faith and not by my feelings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, Doris, I'm going to say this in a bold way, sweetheart. I'm crazy enough to believe God. Paul said, I'm a fool for Christ. Never. Sweetheart, I heard you talk earlier today, and it was as clear as could be. And I believe that through the Holy Ghost, that he's going to get the glory through your life. And one day you're going to talk in a way that people ain't going to understand or even know how you used to talk. They're going to say, my goodness, you mean to tell me, well, did she go to therapy? Yes, it's called the Holy Spirit. And I believe that as you continue to declare his word, Doris, that God is going to clear your voice. Hallelujah. Anybody believe that with me in this house? I believe it. 
At this time, we're going to receive our offering, amen. Uh, for those of you that prayed that prayer, I just want to say, send a text to 813-999-1359 so that we can pray with you, amen. And we want to walk with you and celebrate with you in your new life in Jesus Christ, amen.